to today's 30 minute session of uh, Looking Ahead, which I will be moderating from Paris in France. As you know, this series of online informal meetings is for us to meet energetic young leaders from every corner of the globe um, whose careers have helped them to be sensitive to family challenges and advocacy. So we are more than happy to welcome Getter Rang, who we are very excited to learn about. I will be looking at the clock to make sure we don't get over the 15 minutes limit. Sorry, Getter, I will be very strict. That's good. <laughs> and, and then I will, we will have a 15 minutes uh, questions and answers session. So for the moment, everyone has their camera off. Getter, the floor is yours. Thank you, Remy. I will uh, share my screen with you. I hope you can all see it now. Is it visible? Yes. Perfect. So, yeah. hello everyone. Uh, my name is Sketa Rang. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you, Ignacio, um, for inviting me to participate in uh, uh, Look Ahead Talks and give a short um, presentation about my self, who I am, who I wish to become. Uh, I describe myself as a Rubik's scoop who has many colors, many sides, uh, which are my different personalities. And I think that in the life we can take in the same way uh, as like a Rubik's scoop. Uh, it offers many different solutions, many different pathways, and it's up to us uh, what we are actually choosing. We decide our journey, uh, we decide the colors, uh, we can try out new different things, we can overcomplicate things, the choice is ours. Uh, today I am telling you my story, uh, who I am, uh, where do I come from, uh, what do I do professionally and uh, what I consider important in life. Feel free to ask any questions, I will be happy uh, to share my experiences, my mistakes, anything. And I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you today. Uh, so, I come from a small country called Estonia, uh, with a little over a million uh, people. Uh, this is where I was born and raised. Mm, I grew up in a small town of 18,000 people. So I consider myself uh, a country girl, <laughs> but I do enjoy going to the city once in a while. <laughs> mm, my hobbies are music, uh, singing, volleyball, I feel real sense of freedom, uh, freedom while snowboarding in the mountains. That's why I, I added this picture here. I'm a big fan of adrenaline in general. Uh, so snowboarding has taught me actually how to pay attention to every step I take and make and uh, have control over what I'm, I'm doing. I also played like volleyball since the whole life. And uh, so I really know the dedication of, of teamwork um, and how important it is. Uh, in my free time, I actually do voluntary work. Uh, I am part of the operational uh, search team of Foundation Missing, uh, which focuses on finding missile, uh, missing people. So on the next slide, you can see uh, my family. And my family is small. Uh, on the right side, I have my mother, uh, Ruth, and on the left side, my grandmother, Saima. And as Ignacio once said, and I've been really thinking about it, that the definition of family really varies. And um, for everyone, uh, family can be a different thing. So I will not uh, even try to describe it anyhow. This is my family. Um, and I love them a lot. We care for each other a lot. And we go support each other through, through thick and thin. Uh, so uh, my journey. Uh, I actually left home, let's say, when I was 16 years old. Um, and I uh, went to high school uh, to the capital of Estonia, to Tallinn. Uh, I really appreciate that my mother uh, supported me through that uh, because it wasn't like the most obvious thing to do. Um, nowadays, I maybe would recommend others to wait a bit more because I had everything uh, that I needed in my small town. I had my hobbies, I had my friends, I had a really good school. But at the same time, I don't regret anything. I gained a lot of experiences in the capital. I knew doors open to me and probably I wouldn't be where I am uh, today if I uh, wouldn't have taken this step. So um, 
when I, when I was about to start my studies, I had a lot of career choices. I wasn't sure what I want to do, but what I was sure was that what I don't want to do. I actually wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to be a policeman. Uh, there was a lot of choices, but um, in the end, um, I mm. chose to go for communication and international relations. I liked them both a lot. Mm. Uh, in the mm. first semester, I took two uh, courses at the same time because I wasn't sure which one of uh, these courses is actually one that I want to focus on the most. But my final choice was made on mostly on people. I felt really connected uh, with people from the communications and uh, we had similar energies, though we had really different point of views and view to the world. And since I really like international relations in general, I chose it as my minor. And uh, I really appreciate international experiences and I always want to dive into them. So I made myself a promise that I will do an exchange program, uh, which I completed in, uh, in Belgium, in Ghent, uh, at Artevelde University College there, uh, where I studied communication management. I truly recommend everyone to, if you have a chance, like doesn't matter if it's an Erasmus program or whatever it is, just go for it. I don't regret, I had the time of my life. I gained a lot of knowledge, many friends for life. Just. Uh, yeah, I'm really happy about that. I have done like two internships. Uh, one of them was in Estonia at um, the organization who was organizing as sport events. Another one in uh, Lisbon uh, at Startup Lisboa. Uh, I actually sent a lot of uh, like letters uh, for the different companies. Would you would like to have an intern who I am? I, I got some replies. I didn't get the replies from many, many organizations, but that doesn't really matter. In the end, I found what I was looking for. So um, I uh, worked for some months in, a, in an incubator and I was responsible for um, helping us starting startups with communication, project management and, and so on. Uh, nowadays, I am studying um, at Lund University in Sweden. Uh, and I chose the management program because it took me be, uh, beyond uh, just the books and really heart of real life management challenges. Uh, the main uh, like topics uh, that we are focused on are like marketing, strategic management, business consultancy and organis organizational uh, management. Uh, and I would say there's a really mm -hmm. strong bridge between like my previous studies um, my current career uh, and my future career. They all have been international and I always want them to be international uh, because I really think I'm stepping out of the comfort zone is something that takes you further. And I really thrive on challenges and I, must, I consider myself working better when there's like a pressure. So I like to do stuff that are not the most comfortable to do. Uh, let's go. Uh, to the next slide. I'm uh, working at the NPO, Estonian Association of Large Families, uh, which was founded in 1996. And um, uh, I, compared to other countries, it's a small organization, but for Estonians, it's quite a big organization because uh, we, uh, we have 10, 20 member uh, organizations um, all over Estonia. We are an umbrella organization, uh, uniting families uh, with four or more children and um, the organization bases its uh, activities mainly on value, valuing and supporting large families. Um, the network itself includes 1,800 families who has, and like the families include more than 8,000 children. I put the website here if someone you, some of you wants to check, but unfortunately it's only in Estonia, but if you want to have some visuals. Uh, then feel free. Uh, our mission actually is to increase the well-being of families uh, and reputation of Estonia's uh, families as well um, with many uh, children mm -hmm. to the cooperation with, uh, with the government, uh, with local units um, and so on. Our vision is that a family with many children feels valued in society and also feels financially secure. Um, the union is, uh, is well-known, uh, reliable, 
mm-hmm. and competent mm-hmm. partner in, in Estonian society. So we uh, have a word uh, when it comes to creating family policies and we try to be really responsible for that. And our values are just caring uh, for each other, uh, children and, and for families. Here on the right, you can see a picture of the family who uh, got elected as the large family of the year. And uh, there's a family with six children. They used to live in a city, but they moved down to the south of Estonia and they opened their own chocolate factory. So the mother is like the greater of the, uh, the, greater of the business and she's working with the packages of chocolates. And the father is uh, like the chocolate, how to say, chef, <laughs> the one who makes the chocolate. So the family is included and, and children are really active, really lovely family. Uh, on the next photo, uh, you can see the photo of our feminine crew, I would say. What a pity we don't have any men uh, in our board. I hope it will change, but uh, at the moment we have six people in board, uh, on, on the board. And uh, in the middle, uh, you can see uh, the president of our, Peter, of our Peter, association. I'm just looking yeah. at the, the time. Uh, I think we, we started one minute late, so we will give you one more minute that will impede on the questions. Just wanted to remind you that. Thank you. So I have one minute. I have one minute. Two, two more minutes. Okay, I think we started a little uh, later, but I will uh, move to the most important important part. What I would just, just uh, really choose your battles. I, as a student, I put a lot of important things that didn't matter that much. Like choose something that you really like. Uh, put some time to cooperate with people. Try out different solutions. Uh, the main thing that you need to have, in my opinion, is curiosity. Do everything but with curiosity. If you're curious about something, go for it. And um, do nev- never be uh, afraid of re- rejection somehow, because I have got rejected many times, but it never stopped me. And I would say that be like really uh, responsible for what you do and for what you say, because it may have like a larger effect than you actually think it has. Um, and just the main, uh, maybe the main thing that I would suggest is just like, don't be afraid. Dive in, try the stuff that you would never imagine yourself doing and it will pay off. And how to support families worldwide? Uh, first thing is empathy. You, you just have to put yourself in other people's shoes. And there's a lot of ways to get included. For example, if you're studying law, you can always focus on like family laws or if you are, have studied communications like me, you can uh, contribute by joining the large family associations, by joining any other large organization like IFFT or ELFAC, you name it. Uh, there is a lot of like projects, work- workshops, seminars going on. So just search for the information. They're just really great. I met a lot of friends. It's some of you uh, are here today. I really appreciate it. Uh, what I would also recommend is seek for positivity because reputation matters. And nowadays families uh, have, I would say, uh, maybe not the best reputation in some countries. So we really have to make sure that we bring out the best. We focus on good stories. We show what they're good at. It's not all about negativity and like financial issues. We have to bring up the positive and what comes with having a large family or a small family, it doesn't really matter. Just like create the world you want to live in, uh, why I chose what I'm doing is I love what I'm doing and I also I'm also creating the future for my own children for my own family thank so you I think very much did I manage to fit it in <laughs> yes absolutely congratulations okay. thank you very much so now I will invite everyone else who has uh, who have questions to open their camera so I can uh, redirect uh, the questions, but first, I I I, I was very interested in uh, in the NPO association that uh, that uh, that you 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 work with actually. So how 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 do they how how does it work if uh, if for for a young person like you uh, who. I mean, you, you don't have seven children yet. <laughs> so how, how did you have this idea? 
how that's my first question okay uh, actually i get this question a lot uh, because i don't have brothers and sisters i don't have children myself so how did i end up like dealing with family issues yeah. and i would say like it's a huge advantage because most of people, a lot of people who are dealing with issues, they have like large families themselves. So often I have a different perspective and when we put it together, we, we create something different with, with a new insight. So um, I actually ended up, uh, I got an email from my university. They were looking for, for a person to work there and I just had this click. It was a whole new world for me. I was never actually really interested in, in like family issues. I, I was never thinking about it. But then I wanted to do something that has a value and actually changes something. And then I died in and almost three years later, well, I'm, I'm still here. And just uh, my network gets wider and wider. Uh, and I'm enjoying it. There's a lot to do more than I ever thought. <laughs> so I really encourage everyone to try out. It, it can be a new field and you don't have to be like, uh, you, don't have, you, you don't need to have a family yourself or you don't have to come from a large family. It really doesn't matter, in my opinion. So it's, it's a move from the heart and a, a click. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> On an email, okay. And what are the uh, actions that... Uh, it's, it's interesting that they have this, uh, this award, uh, the, the big family of the year. That's, uh, that, that's funny, actually. But uh, w what actions are uh, implemented on the ground? I, I guess uh, po political or uh, communication or I don't know. So what are, what are the actions? Yeah, quite often uh, like different parties or different politicians come to talk to us. to have uh, different insights when it comes to even transportation. Uh, do large families have uh, like decent vehicles? How can we improve it for them? Uh, what, do, what are their actual needs when it comes to like paying the fees for the families? Because uh, I would say that it's, it's a little problem when children turn 18, then they will not get any benefits from, from the government anymore, anymore and they're somehow like alone in the world. But that's exactly the moment when they start needing more. They're going to live in other cities. They are going to, they are becoming independent. So it's our responsibility to make sure that the voice of these family, families is heard on, on a bigger level, on a smaller level as well, but on a bigger level as well. And we try to be responsible for that and like hear, hear out the families. Uh, on a more practical level, uh, we have introduced the, the family card, which I was responsible for for many years. Uh, so this card gives um, discounts in, in museums, cafes, theme parks, uh, food stores, it could be anything. So we have around uh, 400 partners who offer more than 500 um, uh, discounts uh, all over Estonia. And we try to cover it well. So each corner <laughs> of our country has something to offer to the families. Of course, capitals always have more. Uh, but we really want to offer quality to the families and don't accept just like 10% discounts because that doesn't change that much for the family, but actually give them a value that they would win. And the, the, the purpose is actually to make them do more things together. So if they have this card, they start looking for uh, like what they could do or what kind of experience, experiences they could gain together, like just creating memories as a large family. And I would say that's even more important than getting a discount itself. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah, more important than the discount is the, the card, the, the idea of doing something as a family. Okay, and uh, wh how? Wh what is the the minimal number of children that families should have to be a, a large family? Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, like by law, it's three uh, children now. So uh, yeah. when it comes to issuing the card, you can apply when you have three children. But since we are like an umbrella organization and each um, organization uh, of the county can decide themselves, uh, like what are the exact rules or how do they accept families. So some organization accept families from three children on and some others from four children on. So um, 
uh, it depends a lot. Okay. But uh, like we as, a, as an organization, we also like write quite a lot of projects to get some funding so we can support families like children if they want to uh, play guitar or they want to attend to, I don't know, gymnastics. So they have a chance to apply for extra funding and uh, we help Great. them with that. With the funds that we have, of course, <laughs> not endless. <laughs> not endless. We wish. I think we have a question from uh, Joshua, am I right? And from Adam as well. Okay, yes. yes. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I have a question. Thanks, Geta Rank, for the presentation. So my question is going to go to the definition of families. So you are saying that for a family to join your organization, they have to have some families, three, some four. So my question is, uh, so what plans do you have for families who can't give birth, who can't have kids due to medical circumstances or things? So do we have to exclude them from this framework of, of, of more uh, friendship or solidarity and benefit or, yeah. So I, what do we do? Mm -hmm. I think that we should never exclude them. Uh, just the, the main aim of organis our organization is different, but there are like different organizations who, who deal with different issues. But I really agree that if, like, if we would have like the power or the resources, for example, to offer, offer like same even discounts for all the families in Estonia uh, for, with one child, with uh, child, uh, children with disab disabilities, I would do it hands down. Uh, but I do, I, I do agree that uh, these questions have to be raised. And I really don't think that um, any group of people is less important. So by addressing uh, like large families, because I work there, I really don't think that um, uh, any other uh, group of people should be excluded. But I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that there should be more uh, like focus on that as well. <laughs> Am I answering to your question? <laughs> I think yes. Yes, you, yes, you did. Adam, I think you had a question, please. Yes. Take the floor. So, yes, get it. Uh, one question. What is the general situation of, uh, of a family in Estonia? So what is the, the average uh, family looking like? And what is that? Is there any discussion if we are in the right direction should we improve some is there any political and social discussion on that uh there definitely is and the direction has been changing because not so long ago we introduced a new law that every family with three children uh gets 500 euros from the government so i i don't want to uh like it shouldn't be the reason to get more children but somehow it has activated uh people to decide on getting like a third child, uh, which changes the demographics a lot. But I have to say that there is a, a problem, like people nowadays tend to have less children and I'm not the best example myself. I'm, I'm, I'm 25 years old, I don't have any children yet. I do wish uh, to have one or many or as much as I can one day, let's see. But there's definitely a problem uh, that, uh, that the number of population is decreasing and uh, and we definitely have to raise the birth uh, rate. So uh, we have some measures, but I think there, there could always be more, like Hungary is implementing really strong measures when it comes to supporting families, especially large families. But at the same right. time, I also don't wanna like miss people with, with one children, for example, because I know I came from, from a family like this and, and uh, we never like lacked anything, but I think that it would, would have been nice to have some uh, benefits, for example, if you are a mother raising a uh, child yourself. Right. So there's Thank a lot so of work to do, but there are some measures that has been introduced and like father's salary as well. We are one of the highest, uh, like there is 30 days of uh, father's salary in Estonia. So we are going slow, but we are getting there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank right, you, Adam. Thanks. And we have another question from, I think, uh, I can't see the name yet, Rulof. Oh, yeah, indeed, indeed. Hello, Rulof. Uh, hey, Gerda. <laughs> uh, good to see you again. Um, Same. Yeah, uh, I had a, a small question, but uh, I was wondering, how, are, um, how, do the, how, how does the Estonian youth uh, think about children or getting children? Is it a, a thing that is uh, just common sense is that, you know, getting more children is good or 
how are they looking at us? I would say that it's 50-50, though I, tend, I think that it's more like people are starting to have uh, less children. Unfortunately, I have this feeling uh, because everyone is focused on their careers mostly. But I'm, I'm really glad that it's not seen as a shame. Uh, this has been changing because maybe uh, not so long ago, it was uh, seen as a shame, like if you decide to have a child uh, at a young age. But I can really uh, tell at least my circle, my friends are having like children, it's seen as something really positive. But uh, people tend to make this decision later, later on in life. But I'm, I'm really glad that like the reputation of it has been shifting, at least in Estonia. It will be really interesting to know how it is in other countries. Well, that's great. I think we have a last question from uh, Evan. Evan, your microphone is off. I don't know how to turn it on. Wait a minute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, okay, perfect. So thank you, everybody. So my question was very specific about the organization because we said there, there are these discounts, these cars, some benefits for large families. So my question was, what are the terms? I mean, let's suppose, for example, there's a family with five children, okay? mm -hmm. and then there is one that, no, two, and one is 20 and the other one is 18, so they're over age, basically, mm -hmm. but they're not allowed to work because, I don't know, they're studying or they're under, I don't know, some sort of stage or something. Do they lose these benefits because they fall under the category of small families or do they still keep it because it's it's if they were working they thank, thank would you be very much Evan. I, we, we tried to, to 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 stay by the limit of the time and get her you have 50 seconds yeah <laughs> so, uh, so uh, okay. thank you for the question uh, we actually tried to lose uh, lose this gap between like uh, getting 18 years old so uh, we extend um, these options to children who continue their studies until 26 so they will not be cut off after they turn 18 if they decide to like continue their studies no matter uh, on which level which university whatever the school uh, and also we conclude uh, people with uh, disabilities uh, so if they're until the age of 26 and they have like disability or anything like that so they're still included but if they turn more than 26, then, uh, then uh, some specific uh, discounts uh, or it is. So it is will not offer anymore. Yeah. Flexible. Thank you yeah, very I much. Yeah, I would say it's flexible. <laughs> Thank you very much, Getter, for your answer. Very okay. concise and precise. I wanted to step in to say hello to all of you. And thanks very much for coming. That's hello, Inya. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much for being with us today. Uh, we, we will meet again in two weeks. So it's gonna be on Wednesday, 18th of November, uh, same time, uh, to welcome uh, Renato Cursi, who I think was here with us today uh, from Italy. So thank you everyone, and uh, glad we managed to, to stay in the time frame. Thank you very much.